There's a passage in the canon where King Basenadi comes to see the Buddha in the middle of the day. And the Buddha asks him, Where are you coming from? What have you been doing? And the king, in a remarkable display of frankness, says, Oh, the typical things of someone who is obsessed with power, gaining power, keeping power. And the Buddha asks him, Suppose a trustworthy person were to come from the East and say there's a huge mountain moving in from the East, crushing all living beings in its path. Until the trustworthy person were to come from the South. There's a mountain moving in from the South, crushing all living beings in its path. Similarly, from the West and the North. Altogether, four mountains moving in. With all this terrible destruction, what would you do? Realizing that human life is so fragile. And the king said, what else could you do but practice the Dharma? And Buddha said in the same way, I tell you, aging, illness, and death are moving in, crushing all living beings in their wake. What are you going to do? And the king says, what else can I do but practice the Dharma? And how would you practice the Dharma in a case like that, in the case that we're in? You have to calm your mind. In other words, you have to have your priorities. What's important, what's not important, and focus on what's important. As the Buddha said, a sign of a wise person is realizing the duty that falls to him or her, and focusing on that duty, and not taking on duties that don't really fall to you. And one of your main duties is you've got to get your mind in order. It's telling to note that when the Buddha talks about being in the present moment, it's never because the present moment is a wonderful place or it's a, the only reality or anything like that. He said it's because there's work to be done, and you don't know how much time you have. It's always in the context of realizing how close death comes. It could come at any time, and you've got work you've got to do. And you don't know long, how long you have to do it, but you do know that you have right now. So you have to get very focused at that point. Drop all your extraneous concerns and keep your head. There's that phrase, you know, if you can keep your head when everyone else is losing theirs, you're a value. That's a strength. It means, of course, that you have to have some equanimity about the things that are not your duties and that don't fall to you. Because otherwise they fritter away the time and the energy needed for things that really do fall to you. I think this is one of the problems in our societies. We tend to see equanimity as indifference, and indifference as a weakness of the character, that you don't care when you should be caring. But ask yourself, who's placing the shirts on you there? Even the Buddha himself didn't place shoulds on people. The duties that he gave in the Four Noble Truths are there for people who want to put it into suffering, who see that their untrained mind is causing trouble for themselves and for other people. And this is the area where they have real responsibility and also where they have the, the ability to make a difference. You do have some control here, and you want to take advantage of that. There are a lot of things out there that you cannot control, and if you get upset about them, you're going to lose your head. In other words, you're going to forget about what your real duties are, the duties that you've taken on yourself. So it doesn't matter who's riding the mountains or what path the mountains are taking, they're moving in. There's sort of a morbid fascination now in reading the news. But how much of that do we really need to know? It doesn't take much to size up the situation and to tell yourself, okay, I've got to focus on my business, because the news is telling you that what you're doing right now is of no importance. They're happy to move into your space and move into your time and move into your mind, to tell you what to think, what to do. And you have to say, no, I've got to make my own priorities, and I can't let it my time be invaded like this. I can't let my mind be invaded like this. 
say to try to extend goodwill to all. And that means everybody, even the people you don't like, even the people who are the main causes of trouble on earth right now. And what does goodwill mean in that case? It means that you wish that they would see the true causes for happiness and be willing and able to act on them. And that's something we can fervently wish for everybody. But the goodwill has to be tempered by the realization that not everybody's going to do that. Someone once asked the Buddha this teaching that he's given that leads people, or leads the world out to freedom. Is the whole world going to go, or half the world, or a third of the world? And the Buddha didn't answer. Ananda, who was sitting by, was concerned that the person who asked the question might get upset, that here he is asking an important question and the Buddha is playing silent. And so Ananda took the person aside and said, it's like a fortress. You've got a wise gatekeeper at the fortress, and there's one gate. And he goes walking around the fortress. He doesn't see a hole even big enough for a cat to slip through. A nice image. He comes back and he can't conclude how many people are going to go in and out of the fortress. But he does know if they're going to go in and out of the fortress, they've got to go through the gate. In the same way, the Buddha doesn't know how many people are going to come in and out of the fortress, i.e. follow his path. But they, he does know that if they're going to go, they're going to, have to follow this path. The Eightfold Path, the Seven Factors for Awakening, the Establishing of Mindfulness. This is the path. So there's no telling how many people are going to be willing to search for true happiness. And you can't make your happiness depend on their choices. If your happiness depends on the choices of other people, it's going to be very unstable. You have to make it depend on your choices, which means when it comes to the choices of other people, you have to be equanimous. You have to keep your head so you can make your choice as well, because that's the area where you do have some responsibility and do have some power to make a change. So as you're training the mind here, remind yourself, this is where the work is. This is where you, you want to be, and if you want to put an end to suffering, if you want to be responsible about the way you look for happiness. And not being equanimity about the things around you, that's actually a strength of character and not a weakness. So do your best not to let your head get cluttered up with things that will make you lose your head. Try to stay focused so that even when the mountains come moving in, they can't crush your spirit, they can't crush the goodness of your heart. They can cr crush the strength of your heart, even as the body goes. The heart will move on. Consciousness will move on. And that's the time when you really need to keep your head. So if news makes you lose your head right now, how are you going to keep your head when you have to leave this body? You've got to develop st the strength of equanimity to make sure you make the right choices.